Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzi and welcome to another episode of the Cat Skull Academy, the series that aims to teach you everything you need to know about the various different gameplay systems and mechanics in Eve Echoes. In today's video we're going to be talking about navigating in space. Please note that we're talking about navigation, not propulsion. If you're looking on information about afterburners, micro warp drives or how your warp drive works, that will be covered in another video in the Academy elsewhere. Today's video is going to cover both types of navigation, that is to say navigation in the same system as yourself and interstellar navigation. We're going to be looking at using the overview to navigate alongside manual control and thruster control. We'll also have a look at interstellar navigation using the star map, taking a look at its naming conventions and how the different filters in it work, and we'll have a look at how to find assets in distant stations across New Eden so that you can find any of your stuff that you've misplaced. We'll also be looking briefly at how autopilot works, though we will not be covering bookmarks at length in this video, again that will be found elsewhere in the Catskull Academy series. If you enjoy this video and find it useful, please let me know by hitting like on it, subscribe to the channel for plenty more co topics like this, all things Eve Echoes and Eve Online. And if you do want ha to find out more about how this game works, make sure that you check out the Cat Skull Academy playlist and that you come join the Cat Skull Discord, which is linked in the description of this video. A whole bunch of really friendly folk there willing to help and uh, to help train you and teach you everything they know about how this game works. With all that said and done then, let's jump right into today's lesson on talking about navigation. The first type of navigation that we're going to cover then is how to navigate around the system that you are currently in, and there are two ways to do this. First of all, by using the overview, and second of all, by using manual controls. So first things first, let's talk about the overview. That is this little window that you can open and close on the right hand side by touching the little eye icon. You can see it here as so I open it, and then again to close it. Once it has been opened, of course you can change the different menus here as well, and there will be a Catskull Academy lesson on how to set up your overview to better suit your own individual needs. For now though, it's worth just drawing your attention to just above the eye symbol. In this case you can see that there's a 10, a 7 and a 2 next to some funny looking symbols. Now the 2 next to the square means that there are two stations within this system, so if I go to the station tab here, you can see that there are indeed two stations in the system. The 7 next to the funny little triangle is mining belts and anomalies, so again if we go back to the menu and have a look at the mining options, you can see that there are indeed seven different mining clusters and asteroid belts that we could warp into if we so wished. The final one here up at 10 is Cosmic Anomalies. These are your different ratting missions that you can jump into, blow up some pirates and earn some money. So if we go to Cosmic Anomalies you can see all of this here. And again we'll talk at length about what the difference between a small, medium, large scout anomaly and base is in a future video. For now though, stay away from bases. They are kind of important, leave them alone for the most part and you'll do pretty well from there. Obviously, the higher the number as well, the more difficult the content. With these all being uh, Angel Anomaly 1, they are very simple anomalies to clear, and they won't reward all that much ISK, but the higher the number, the more difficult they will be, and they roughly correspond to the tech level of the ships that you can fly. Anyway, with most things in the overview, you'll find that you can tap on them to bring up additional options. This will usually just be approach and warp, but sometimes if I were to go to a station here that is on the same grid as me, which I'll discuss in just a moment, you see we get additional options here. Stations will always give you the option to dock at them. You'll sometimes get save location as well as a way of setting up a bookmark, again we'll cover that later, but when you are on grid with something you will usually have the ability to orbit it, observe it, and lock onto it. Those will be three other options that only appear when you are on grid. So what is meant by on grid? Well if you tap your HUD right here in the center and zoom the camera all the way out, you will see that ultimately there are certain things that I can see, like these little blue dots and the actual station itself, and some things that are not 
sort of shown and displayed properly. Basically, a rule of thumb is if it's within sort of a thousand or five thousand kilometers, you can usually see it here and you'll be able to sort of tap on it and get some basic things as to what you can do with it. It's like targeting and things like that. If a ship is on grid with you, it will appear up here in the top right. If it is not on grid with you, you won't see it, but the name will appear in local, like you can see here. Anyway, if you're wondering how I've got this all set up here as well, this is just going into the battle settings and activating the tactical overlay. There is a Cat Skull Academy video on that as well, but let's zoom the camera back in for now. So, having opened up the overview and seen these different options, we can do all kinds of different things. Now, approaching does literally what it says on the tin. You tap this and your ship will then move to approach that particular target. If the target is moving, then you will just continue to follow it until either you reach zero kilometers or whatever your approach has been set to. And we'll talk about that briefly in a moment. You can also hit I am orbit on a target if you are close enough to it. Here you can see I'm over 150 kilometers away, so we're going to speed up just to get within range there. And I should be able to then select orbit once we are a little bit closer. Hopefully that's about the 150 mark. There we are, once we're within 150, we can now also observe the target, which basically changes our camera to have a look at it. And if you want to then come back from this, just tap in the center there and then reset camera. And we can also now orbit it. Now, if you just tap orbit, it will go to whatever your auto orbit is set to. Now, currently mine is set to 10 kilometers. It's the same as when you ch uh, tap approach. You will just go to whatever your approach has been set to. And you can change this manually by tapping on the ship and then changing set orbit or set approach. You long press on this and then you can drag. So here you can see I could change that to say six kilometers and now if I then tap an orbit, you'll see at the bottom there, it changes to orbiting Republic Parliament Bureau six kilometers. To showcase that one last time, let's change the orbit back to 10 kilometers. And you see below my ship here, it says Republic Parliament Bureau six kilometers. If I now try to orbit it again, it will set that now to a 10 kilometer. Nice and simple, right? Now, if you don't want to just use auto orbit, you can also long press on it here and set a manual orbit for this particular item. If you decide that actually you don't want to do this, rather than kind of having to set an orbit and then change it, you can drag this all the way out past 100 kilometers and it will then turn red and offer you the cancel option. So we can let go of that and we'll now cancel that option. The same can also be done if we tap on a, diff a distant station here, we can long press on warp and warp in at a different kilometer distance as well. That means that we can either warp in at zero, which will be right next to it. We can warp in 100 kilometers away from it and then approach manually. This allows you to have a look at things from relative safety. And again, if you decide that actually you don't want to warp at all, just long drag out, then let go once it is on cancel. Nice and simple as that. Now, those are your ways to manually move around the, uh, to manually navigate around the system using the overview. The same is true that if you wanted to go into a mining anomaly, you just simply tap on it and then warp to it by doing as before, or you can just approach it. Now, technically, if you were to just approach a target and then leave yourself drifting towards it, you will eventually reach it. However, at 0, uh, 8.03 astronomical units away and going at 323 meters per second, it is going to take me literally months to get there of game time, which is frankly insane. Um, so we're not even going to bother. So we would just warp and I'm going to warp in just to showcase to the 50 kilometer mark here. There we are. We're already facing in the right direction. So approaching warp speed should be nice and quick. There we are. We're jumping. And we're already there. You can see our ship is now decelerating as we arrive at this particular asteroid cluster. And when I do so, you should see that the central marker is about 50 kilometers away because we warped in at 50. This can be very useful if you have a ship that uses longer range weaponry because it means you can warp into a cosmic anomaly, for example, and just warp in at distance. You don't have to warp in at zero, then run to safety. You can warp in at a safe distance and start firing from there. Very useful if you're running a sniper or longer range ship. 
Now that's how to use the overview to navigate around system, but there are sometimes situations where you don't want to just be flying towards something or away from something, you want to kind of move in a different direction. Like here, sure, if we imagine that these asteroids were enemy ships and I wanted to get some distance between me and them, I could turn the camera around and then tap on the station here and I could approach it. That would then, of course, turn me away from those asteroids, and you can see I would start moving away from them. And if you watch the distances here on the right-hand side, you can see those distances are going to increase there as I move further away from these different asteroids as shown in the overview, but that's not a very good way of doing it. It relies on you kind of having to have something behind you at all times. What if I wanted to go off in this direction? Well, simply put, you can double tap into space in the distance there, and your ship will manually align to that particular point. This allows you a lot of control, and if you were to zoom the camera out to the point where you have the tactical overview around, you can actually use this to range find things and figure out where exactly you want to go on your current plane of traversal, um, or go up above it or down below it. You can maneuver as you wish, and so a lot of pilots do tend to play zoomed out like this because you get pretty much all of the information that you need via this tactical overview. That said as well, you might find that your ship, even without an afterburner, is going a bit too fast. If you find that your shots aren't hitting with turrets, for example, it may be that you need to slow down. If we press on this icon here on the left hand side, we can then stop our ship completely by tapping it once, and go back to 100% by tapping it again. We can also press and drag to set an actual flight velocity as well. You can see that my ship's natural flight velocity here, maximum flight velocity is 323, whereas if I go all the way down here, I could set it to, for example, let's try and get it to as close to 200 as possible. There we are. So you'll see that my ship now slows down and aims to hit the speed that I have set it at. And there we go, we are down to 201 meters, 200 meters per second. I've actually set it to 199. Now, of course, if I were then to activate my afterburner, this will then change, but again, I can manually set it based on the new maximum speed. So this time around, I decide that actually, I want to cap at just 600 meters per second. And we'll go as close as we can. Uh, that'll do, 598. Ah. There we go, 599, one off. I think that's about as close as you can really get in this kind of situation. And that gives you much better thruster control and allows you to manually change how fast your ship is moving. If you're finding that, for example, putting on an afterburner is making you too fast and maybe you're using a kiting fit, you're getting too far away from the ships you want to shoot at, you can then manually slow your thrusters down using this slider there. You may decide that actually not even having the afterburner on is too fast and you can slow it down from there as well. It's worth noting that here, if I need to be above the 323 meters per second that the ship has as basic flight velocity, um, even if I don't want the full thing, I can just activate the afterburner and then change it to whatever there. So if I didn't want 383, if I just wanted 468, there we go, that's all now sorted there. That is how to manually navigate based on a system that you are in. But what if you're looking to actually move to different systems? Let's talk about interstellar navigation then, which is to say navigating between multiple different star systems. Now the first point of this is obviously going to be figuring out where we even want to go to begin with, and there are two ways that you can do this. The first and the most obvious one is simply if you're trying to find something that basically you've left at a previous station, maybe you've like had a ship that you've been flying, you docked it up somewhere, you flew off to somewhere else, and now you can't find it, or maybe there are some skill chips or some items you picked up and you're wondering which station you left them at or how to get there, well we can actually open up our inventory by tapping on your face and then tapping on inventory and then in the bottom left we can go to personal assets. This will bring up a list of stations where you have different assets stored. So here you can see that I have some modules currently at G to 4. I have some at Nakagard, which we can have a look and see is that what I'm looking for there, Osamuni 8. There we are, because these are actually in the system that I'm in. So we're going to actually keep going and find something else to have a look at. There we are. Let's go with this one. If I wanted to have the ship safe, because I've decided that I'm enjoying flying the Omen, but I really want to try the Vexer, how am I going to get here? 
Well, there are two ways. The most obvious one is that at the bottom of the screen here, I can tap down here where it tells me which station this is. And if I tap at it, it'll bring up a possible autopilot route. I can save this as location and just create a bookmark for later, or for now, I can hit set destination. If you just saw that little animation there at the top left, that is the autopilot clicking into position. So we can now close down everything else, come back to our front screen, and you'll see that in the top left here, we now have an autopilot set that tells me that Barkirk is six jumps away, and that's approximately four minutes worth of jump time and 36 light years. Now, if we tap on the actual bar, not on the arrow and not on the marker, but on the bar itself, it'll just take us straight back to this. And what we can do here is alter how our autopilot would work. And we're gonna talk about this briefly now. Ultimately, autopilot will take you from A to B to C, depending on whatever route you've got set, um, and allow you to just get there without having to worry about it. You can actually even close down the app, and the game will continue to autopilot you towards your destination, eventually docking up if you've set it as a station, or letting you know that you have arrived in space. You should actually get a notification on your device letting you know that you've arrived. It's worth noting that there is this little cog here on the right hand side where it says prefer safer. This will give you different options. You might decide that there are multiple different routes and you just want to avoid Nullsec because you really don't want to go there, that's a scary place where people can destroy you. You might decide that you don't care about going to Nullsec and you just want to go the shortest route possible between the two. You might prefer actually not going through safe zones and keeping to the dangerous side of things, at which point we can go prefer less safe. And of course, prefer safer is probably the one you're going to use most of all at the start. This will try to prioritize 0.5 to 1.0 system so that you don't even enter low sec. It is worth noting, however, that is not always going to be possible and there are times when autopilot will still have to take you through some low sec systems. So take a look at the color of the line between two points. If it's green and blue, that means it's just in high sec. If you're seeing any yellow, orange, or red, that means you're looking at low sec and null sec systems. Now you can actually tap on the line or just that animation in general, and it'll tell you exactly which systems you're going through so that you can double check the security status of those systems. If it is just 1.0 down to 0.5, you will be completely safe. There is nothing currently in the game that will be able to stop you, grab your ship, and destroy you in any of those securities. At 0.4 to 0.1, it is technically possible for someone to blow your ship up if you're not careful. It's unlikely, but it is possible. Once it's 0.0, .0 and lower into the negative numbers, that is null sec, at which point it is highly likely that someone will grab you and destroy you. Even if you try to offline autopilot, your ship does still move through space, so that is worth bearing in mind. Do not offline autopilot if you are going through null security systems, red systems. Once you're happy that everything here is okay and safe, all you need to do is tap on start, at which point, if we close everything down, your ship will start to manually navigate to these points, and you can press the pause button here on the autopilot menu to stop that in its tracks, sometimes you are still moving towards a particular point. And if we open up our overview quickly and have a look at the different stargates here, you'll see the Onga is actually now shown in yellow, and in fact in the actual camera point here as well, you can see that the icon for it, just to the right of the gate there, is now also showing as yellow. This basically means this is the direction that your autopilot is taking you, so if we turn on the autopilot to allow us to jump this gate and move into our next system over, you'll see that the autopilot now highlights the next part of the route in yellow. I'm going to pause the autopilot so that we stop on the gate when we arrive here, and you see in the overview now that the yellow has now changed to Lustrovic. That shows us that that is the next gate in our journey, and if I open up this again, you can see indeed Lustrovic 0.9 is the next one on the list. Now, what do these names and numbers and all of that actually mean? Well, to talk about that, we're going to have a look at the star map. So if we close all of this down, tap on the face, and then go to star charts on the left-hand side here, this will bring up the star chart based on your current situation. If you've got an autopilot set, you'll see that that route is a glowing dotted line showing where you currently are to where you're currently going. And you can pinch out and in to zoom this just as you would on most things. 
And if we zoom right in, you'll notice that the system that we are in is flashing. You get this little throbbing flashing light on the actual system that you are currently in. Now, if there are any lines coming off that system, these are other systems that you can jump to from the one that you are in. It means there's a gate in Onga here that will take us across to the side to Magicka, one down here to, uh, how do you pronounce that, Krill McKenna, down here to Osamuni, and there will be ones coming down here even, all the way down here to Ging if that's how this should be pronounced. Some of the systems in EVE are slightly crazy names. And of course, if you're looking for Pater, that one is connected as well. There is a, you can see there's a connecting line between Onga and Pater there. And of course, Lustrovic, the next one on our list. Now, if I tap back onto Onga, if you have a look at the top left, you can see a list of words, basically. This is the full sort of address, like you could have your house address, the number, then the street that you're on, then the town that you're in, then the county or state that that town is found in, then your country. That's kind of what we're looking at here. Onga is the actual system, and 1.0 is its security level. Errada is then the constellation that that is in. You can see this highlighted there in yellow. That is the constellation that we're in, kind of like a state or a county. Hymatar is then the region that we're in, which is kind of the equivalent of a country. And then New Eden is, well, it's the entire game. That is New Eden there. Every single system, every region constitutes New Eden. Now I'm going to close this down and open it back up just as a quick way of centralizing everything back on where we actually are. Now, if we're having a look at the section here, this is showing the Hymatar region. We have the Arada constellation highlighted, and you can see that our ship is currently based in Onga. Now, there are some options we can use to change things here and how this displays. This is the pie chart symbol down here, kind of filters. I don't know why they haven't used the actual filter symbol, but hey, there we go. First and foremost, we can have security level. This will now highlight the entire map based on the security level of those systems. Again, anything that is green or blue is in high sec, all the way down to 0.5, which is yellow. If it is yellow, 0.5, going through green to blue, it is a high sec system. If it is below 0.5, so 0.4 down to 0.1, that is a low sec system. Those are shown in orange. And then if it's all the way down at 0.0 or lower, then these show as red systems, like here in the Great Wildlands. You can see that all of these are null sec. There is no security out here whatsoever. Enter at your own risk. If we look at Molden Heath as an example of this, you can see that there are some areas in Molden Heath that are green or yellow, showing that they are high sec, um, high security areas. This then goes down through areas like here, which are then orange, showing that they are low secu uh, security areas, all the way down to places like, for example, here, Eggbinger, which is 0.1 security system, before this then jumps across to the Great Wildlands, where it is a 0.0 security system. It's worth noting that most null security systems don't have actual names, they have identifying markers made up of five random letters and numbers like BVIP9 here, or CJ6MT, or N7BIY, P745V, things like that. Don't try and remember them, mostly you'll learn the ones that are important to you if you're based in nullsec. You can, of course, tap on these different parts here as well to move around, and you can see basically how the security systems are laid out in New Eden. The center of the four empires are high security, dropping to low security as you reach the borders, and nullsec are then the areas of space beyond the borders of the four major empires. Let's go back to the menu then. We can also have a look, talking about the empires, at sovereignty info. Now, Sovereignty Info is going to show you all kinds of crazy info. To start off with, you can see that if we zoom in here, there are four big symbols showing in the blue, green, red, and yellow areas. The blue area at the top there is the Kaldari State. The red se uh, section to the right is the Minmatar Republic. To the south and the west there, we have the Amar Empire in yellow. And the green areas are the Galente Federation's controlled space. And there are some really interesting things that you might be able to actually spot here. Um, like, for example, if we zoom right in here, there's actually some Galente controlled systems right in the middle of Kaldari space. And likewise, there are actually some gaps between as well, like Solitude and Verge Vendor here, looking towards the center, are divided by parts of Syndicate. 
This is just a part of the political map and landscape basically of New Eden. Don't stress it too much, but you can get a basic idea of how far the four empires there spread. It's worth noting that there are some grey areas as well that are essentially the NPC factions, like Outer Ring is mainly controlled by ORE, Outer Ring Expeditions, Syndicate is primarily controlled by the Serpentis Corporation, if we look up at Venal here that is controlled by the uh, Gurustus Pirates, as we come further south, the Great Wildlands is controlled by the Thucker Tribe, and Derelic is controlled by the Amatar Consulate. Curse, further to the south here, is the Angel Cartel, and if we were to come all the way down here, we can see Stain as well, controlled by Sanchez Nation. So that gives you an idea of where to find some of these pirates, and if we were to come to sort of Quirius as well, and zoom right in, you'll see that that can be Blood Raider there as well. And if you zoom right in, you'll see that you do actually get the, uh, the the pirate or empire logos next to the names of the system. So like here, A-E-L-E-2 is a uh, Blood Raider system. One zero, uh, 1DHSX is again a Blood Raider system. If we come back up here and have a look in, for example, Kador, all of these systems here have the Amar Empire symbol next to them, showcasing that that is Amar Empire space. That means it cannot be controlled by players, it is controlled by one of the NPC factions. As you come further out though, you start getting this wild variety of colours and different symbols. These are player sovereignties, so if you're looking at a particular corporation or alliance, you can see basically where they're based. So for us, of course, here in Catskull, we're based in Scalding Pass area, and you can start to see a lot of Void and Catskull stuff starting to come up here. There we are, there's the Catskull Cartel, WO, GCO, right in the centre there, and you can see where our sphere of influence does extend. Useful to know if you are friendly with a particular faction, where their borders lie. If we go back to the filters and go back up, useful for navigating areas of space that you may be in is stations. You'll notice that this now changes to a black and white with some red pulsing areas. These are your stations, and the brighter the lights, the more stations there are. So if we jump back to where we are and zoom in here, you'll see that as we get nice and close, ultimately there are bigger, it can be hard to see, but once there is a circle around a system, like if we're looking at these, uh, the bigger that circle, the more stations there are in that system. This allows you to actually sort of plan a route whilst you're exploring or doing encounters and find your nearest station. So if you're in an area that doesn't have stations, you can look at that. You can also just tap across to the next one and you can tap then it's one of these solar system. There we go. <laughs> I'll get there in the end. And you can see that there are then giving you a map of the solar system you're in. And if you've got any squares like these, these can then be the different stations and you can then tap and set as destination to autopilot to one of those stations. And if you need to come back out again, you can tap on the names at the top here. And you can see that, the, as I said, the brighter it's glowing red, the more stations there are around there. If we go back to the filters, there's also the Interstellar Trading Center, especially useful if you are a hauler. Every major region in high sec and low sec has its own Interstellar Trading Center. There are also a couple of null sec ones available, um, try not to focus on those too much. These will tell you where those all are, and you can tap in and have a look. So if we were to go here into the forge, you see that that red dot moves to the side here. Give you three guesses which ITC that is. That is Jeta. That is everyone's favourite interstellar trading centre, and um, pretty much centre of the galaxy as much as commerce is uh, concerned. That is there. So again, you can find these nice and easy where your nearest ITC is, um, so that you can actually have stuff shipped there if you wanted to, um, or of course you can just fly all the way to Jeta. Finally then, if we have a look down here, the last one to have a look at really is ships destroyed in the last hour. This is especially useful if you're going to be tra uh, traveling through null sec or even certain areas of low sec. You're going to see and look for anything that is glowing red. And if your route looks pretty clear, like if for example, I was looking at going down to Malden Heath, let's say that I'd dropped some stuff off at Easterdard, which is one of the uh, ITCs, let's set an autopilot for there. I can have a look at the systems en route. I can see most of them are green and yellow, which means they're going to be safe. But those last few there are in low security. And there's been no kills in the last hour there. I could change this to ships destroyed in the last 24 hours, just to see if there's any activity going on. But fortunately, that particular section of the route looks to be quite quiet. 
Kattegaud here in the uh, southeast of the system, however, of the region, however, does look like there were some ships destroyed there not too long ago, sometime in the last 24 hours. It just means you can kind of see a basic idea of what is going on, but nothing destroyed in the last hour. However, that just means that you can keep an eye out for things like gate camps if you are going through null security areas. Um, you can see here down in period basis, somewhere there is a system, there it is, that's had some ships destroyed in the last hour. That's probably somewhere I would avoid for the time being as it's likely there's a gate camp or a fight or something going on down that way. But as you can see, that's all the way out in deep null sec. You're probably not going to be worried too much about that at this point in time. And that's the star map. Ultimately, that allows you to navigate through space, set your own route, set your own destinations, and actually have a look at some of the systems and see how New Eden itself is built. So there we have it. We've had a look at manual overviewing, uh, manual piloting, and the overview for travel through the current system you're in. We've had a look at interstellar travel with the star map, with looking at naming conventions and the filters used there. We've shown you how to find assets, and we've shown you how to use your autopilot. And if you decide that you've done with your autopilot, you can just tap end and it will get rid of it there nice and easily. Hopefully that's given you some help in finding anything that you happen to have lost or figuring out how to explore New Eden and how to move around. Some of these tips I've been surprised. A lot of players I've known who've been playing the game for a long time haven't known how to use all of them. So hopefully that's been useful to you in the meantime at least and will help you find your way around. Of course, if you do still have any questions at all regarding Eve Echoes, please don't hesitate to ask either in the comment section of this video or by coming and finding me on the Catskull Discord. The Catskull Discord is linked in the description of this particular video and there are a bunch of folks there more than happy to answer any questions you have and anyone in those public channels on that Discord is in for the chance of winning a month of Combo Omega every single week. Every week I give three lucky winners a month of Combo Omega, two of those are chosen from the public channels of my Discord, one of them is chosen from the comment section of YouTube, so make sure you're commenting, make sure you're asking questions, and good luck to you there as well. Anyway folks, thank you for watching this one right the way to the end, I hope it's been helpful, happy sailing, and see you in New Eden!